Urban renewal began its flame during the tail end of the Great Depression, where the United States was attempting its recover from its wounded state. Lauderdale Courts, built in 1938, was one of the country's first federal public housing projects. Elvis Presley was a resident of these white-only apartments from 1949 to 1953. In 1939, the Memphis Housing Authority replaced the areas in between the streets Vance Avenue, Lauderdale Street, Mississippi Boulevard, and 4th Street with federally funded public housing projects. These projects included Lauderdale Courts, Dixie Homes, Foot Homes, and Cleborne Homes. These projects would be temporary residences to those that were affected by the Great Depression. Foot Homes off of Vance Avenue was the second largest and most affordable public housing complex for the low-income African-American population. It was completed April 21, 1941, each unit equipped with large social spaces for recreation and modern appliances. Beginning in 1953, highways were beginning to sprout around Memphis, leading to the suburban paradises outside the city. The central surrounding loop, I-240, was completed in 1963. This allowed Memphians to abandon the downtown district in disagreement of the passage of civil rights laws and the desegregation of public housing. The addition of highways led to empty sidewalks in the downtown district, which fed fears about decrease in public safety as well as the vacant, blighted blocks. In an attempt to eradicate the issue, the city of Memphis lost the district surrounding Beale Street by raising whole blocks at one time. No large-scale urban renewal projects were further presented until after Edmund Orgill became mayor in 1955. Orgill proposed many projects during his term, including Railroad Avenue, Jackson Avenue, Riverview, the Medical Center, and the Civic Center. One of Mayor Orgill's largest plans was to use urban renewal funds to transform Beale Street into a variation of Bourbon Street in New Orleans to promote tourism. Those plans were put on hold in 1966 by the National Park Service, who designated two blocks of Beale Street a National Historic Landmark. Although Riverview was never produced, Orgill's Railroad Avenue project was launched, raising 292 substandard structures on 42 acres in order to place commercial industrial development. It was placed right below the Foot Homes and Cleborne Homes projects. On April 3, 1968, Dr. King returned to Memphis to deliver his infamous mountaintop speech that addressed the sanitation worker strike. The question is, if I do not stop to help the sanitation workers, what will happen to them? That's the question. The new mayor's refusal to remove dilapidated trucks from service cost the life of two Memphis garbage collectors, a Cole Cole and Robert Walker. On February 1, 1968, the garbage truck malfunctioned and crushed the two men. Ten days later, after a long history of frustration with the worsening conditions, 1,300 African-American sanitation workers from the Memphis Department of Public Works went on strike. On the morning of March 28, King led thousands of people in a march along Beale Street, accompanied alongside with policemen, nervously waiting for a moment of turmoil. The march turned violent when young African Americans began throwing bricks at policemen and breaking storefront windows. Tear gas was released along with the use of their whistling clubs and guns. The following day, March 29th, the sanitation workers continued their pursuit and walked along the sides of 4,000 National Guardsmen that were called into the city by the governor of Tennessee. They marched with placards that read, I am a man. You know what happened the other day and the press dealt only with the window breaking. I read the article. They very seldom got around to mentioning the fact that 1,300 sanitation workers are on strike and that Memphis is not being fair to them and that Mayor Loeb is in dire need of a doctor. They didn't get around. The death of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. not only took a toll on the African American community, but also on the city of Memphis. The assassination did not kill downtown Memphis, but instead expedited trends that were underway in attempt to revitalize the city. Mayor Orgill's plans to redevelop Beale Street were back on the drawing board. 1,500 residents were removed from all but 65 of 625 buildings from a 113-acre area 
at the cost of 14 million federal dollars.